All right, we're going to do another rainbow inspired tray and I'm going to mix up the uh, recipe to a different one. Try something a little different. Try different results so you can kind of see what you like and what works for you. So we're going to mix resin and then I'll go through all the products with you. I'm using Artist Resin by Calendar Culture DIY Medium Viscosity, my go-to. And I'm going to do 30 ounces. So 15 of B, B first, and then A into B. A is thicker. It mixes better when it goes into the thinner resin. Starting the timer at 6 minutes. It's going to start out cloudy. As you mix, it will clear up. And you don't have to go fast. You can go just like this, just a slow pace back and forth, crazy eights, and just mix, mix consistently, go around the edges to mix all that A and B together, and I'll be back after six minutes. Okay, it's been six minutes, now we're going to hit the stopwatch and hit start. I'm going to put this aside while I talk to you. This is a 13 inch silicone mold from Amazon. It holds over 32 ounces, but we're only going to put 22 or so in. We're going to put two and a half to three ounces in each of these and they hold four and a half to five ounces. They're pretty thick and they're a set of four from Amazon. I'm only going to do two. I'm doing an Easter inspired series of um, resin pieces for a show. Have masking tape around, paper towels, baby wipes, 91% alcohol is great for cleanup. I'm going to mix up about three ounces in a five ounce cup of white and that white is going to be these three items which I'll tell you about in a second. I'm going to use Bray Reese Lake Blue, Kelly Green, Pinata Yellow, Sunlight Yellow, Pinata Pink, and this is the magenta with a little uh, white mixed in that's in that bottle there. And I might put a drop of purple in somewhere or on it for a color. We'll see. But those are going to be dropped in on top of the resin once we put the resin in the tray. We really want to get a pretty effect. We really want to wait on the timing to at least 20 minutes or so, 20 to 30 minutes, somewhere in that range. And you've got to kind of feel it out, feel how warm it is, because that's really what tells you when the right time to put your white in. These alcohol inks are very potent. And so I'm going to try to spread it out so they're not super condensed because the more condensed, if you put a bunch of alcohol ink in, really dense, then that white, when it sinks through, it may not be quite as visible as if you just kind of lightly put the colors of alcohol inks on the top layer. Another pointer is um, if you put, if you spray alcohol, which you can do anytime during the whole resin process, you could spray them now. You could spray it right before you put resin in. You can spray it with your resin in. It pops bubbles and it helps with bubbles. But if you were to spray it on top of the surface and then put your torch to it, which we have a culinary torch and I keep paper towel wrapped around to keep the resin off of the handle. But if you torch alcohol or inks immediately, sometimes there might be a little flame. So just be super careful with that. I have a low temp heat gun from Counterculture DIY that's 300 watts. I have an 1800 watt heat gun from Amazon. You can also find the low temp heat tool from Amazon as well from a different brand. I'll have all the links below the video to share with you. For the white, I'm going to use Sparkle White by Etsy Funshine Color Shop. This adds sparkle to any color you want and it will not make it a pastel version. But today I'm just putting it in the white because the white is going to be distributed through all the colors and so there'll be sparkle throughout the whole piece just because I'm putting it in, into the white. And then I'm going to use Pinata White alcohol ink and today I'm going to switch it up and use Cast and Craft. 
I have been using Armor Art, but I'm going to switch it up and do Cast and Craft today. That's what I originally used to use, and we're going to switch it up and try it out today and see if we get a different effect. In some of my previous videos, I, le I left the uh, resin in the deep container and waited, but we're gonna, today we're just going to do it differently, and we're going to just go ahead and mix the white up now. So I want probably around three ounces. I want to make sure I have enough. Then put the rest aside. I also have a little spoon that's about the size of my pointer finger. I'm going to put in a really healthy scoop of sparkle white. Just one big healthy scoop. Cast and Craft Pigment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sometimes it comes off the very tip. Then I'm going to um, do almost double. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of the alcohol ink. You could double it. it does, I don't think it really matters. But I usually like to put more alcohol ink than pigment anyway. And this is why I have a paper towel on the mold is just because the mica will kind of fly around. nice consistency and sparkly and we're going to put it aside and let it start to warm up. Again these hold at least four and a half ounces. I'm going to fill them about halfway or so. Right now it's 12 minutes, so I'm going to start, I think, in the center. That's the pink and then the yellow. That's the magenta in the middle. It's really pretty the way that effect is. And that was Deep Violet. That was just an off-brand alcohol ink that I put around here. going to leave those that way just for fun just to see how they turn out. Okay I've swirled the alcohol inks in so I'm just doing a light just light torching. We're at 19 minutes. I want to put something in the middle here. 
I think I'm just gonna put some gold leaf. I can tell this is a lot of pigment and so I'm worried that the white will not show through on this. This here is kind of a muddying up, so I'm not crazy about that, but it is what it is. This purple is really strong. I shouldn't have put so much in, I don't think. So I'm filling my cup right now. It is warm, but it's not super warm. I'm going to give it a probably right at 23 and a half minutes. I'm going to maybe give it another minute or two, a couple more minutes, and then we'll use it. Sometimes when you're doing this, you just don't know which alcohol link is going to just really take over the show. And um, that's why I'm not stirring this one up like I typically do like this because I think it would just go brown. So I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay, it's been 26 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and try to put this in here. doesn't matter if it's jiggity or straight. It's not going to make a difference at the end. on this one <laughs> I'm just gonna say because um, the purple just totally took over the whole piece and so when you have situations like that you just gotta hope for the best and um, kind of wait and see what happens so we'll wait about four to five hours I've got so many deep colors in here and they're just uh, so vibrant and deep that it's just, I'm hoping it's not going to turn out brown. We'll be back. Okay, it's been five hours and I don't feel good about this one, but I may show it anyway, just so you can learn from my mistakes. Definitely the purple just ran amok. <laughs> Interesting, kind of a striped, <laughs> striped blob pattern. Not anything like I expected. Mm. It's not bad. It just became all purple. So I'll still show this video, but um, not a win for me. 
I'll put a top coat on and put it aside. I don't know. That's pretty in a way. Gives me ideas about colors that I want to use. So I'll be back. Okay, so I've let this just sit overnight and thought about it and there are pretty aspects of it. I'm going to go ahead and finish it out and put it in a show that I don't know that it'll have any traction but I have some of these cool bubble glass uh, turquoise knobs and I thought well that's fun and funky. A little bit of that color is popping through so like why not use them and just make it a really weird and funky piece. I have mixed up six out uh, four probably four to four and a half ounces of fast set by counterculture DIY and this is my go-to resin for top coating and setting my knobs in and this has a 10 minute working time and it cures in an hour or two so you have to work fast you cannot do this slow so uh, I'm going to show you how much I put on the coasters I'm going to bring one up to you on the camera here. But I, what I do is I go ahead and put down what I'm going to use on the coaster and the rest is going to go towards the tray. I use a silicone brush and um, I use my low temp heat gun. Just to pop some bubbles <clears throat> and make it a little bit more fluid because it's a much thicker resin and there's usually a lot of bubbles but what I do is I just kind of go in a sweeping motion with this uh, geode shape that has lots of nooks and crannies. We're just doing the top. We're not going down on the sides or anything like that. But if you just do a kind of a curved sweeping motion, it'll take it out to the edges of those points of the geode. But it doesn't really go over because it's thick. and if you put too much resin on here it will flow over so you're only you only need at the most a half an ounce if not less on the um, surface of any coaster that's all you're ever going to need just to top coat it and I'm going to do the same exact thing on the tray just it's just larger and you sweep out in the, from the middle to the edges on the tray which I'm just going to fast forward through all that but you can bring it out and then you have that sweeping motion on the edges where all the nooks and crannies are where all the uh, little points of the geode shape stick out and that keeps you from flowing over the edge of the resin piece and you can even tilt it a bit and it's not going to pour off if you just tilt it for a few seconds. You don't have to worry about it pouring off and then of course you're going to pop all those little mini air bubbles with your torch. So I'm going to do the same thing large scale and I'm going to pour most all of this. I probably have too much resin. I'm going to leave some and I can finish up here and even pour a little bit more on these if I need to. Because um, you don't want, if you put too much on, it's going to be harder for you to manage it. So I have, I have it spread out and I have a good amount left so I'm going to put just a little in the middle because that will kind of self level. I'm going to add a little bit more to the coasters but not much and then I'm going to leave the rest for where I put my knobs in. And I'm just I'm adding a little bit more and I'm going to hit it with the heat gun just to self level it and I still have a little bit left in that cup. And it still has little mini micro bubbles and the, your torch is the best way to get those. 
this layer gives it such a glassy shine and makes it just much deeper with the depth of the colors. So now I need to find where I want to place my knobs and I want to make sure we're still under the 10 minute mark. I always want to make sure you're cognizant of your time with fast set. So I think I'm going to put them here. So you place them a half an inch, three quarters of an inch or so away from the edge of the tray. Yeah, yeah, the edge of it. And then you wiggle. And my, I've got this turntable, which is really fabulous to have it. And if you watch, I'm going to wiggle this. And when it doesn't have much give, then you know you've got a pretty good bond. This one is a little bit more movable, so I'm just going to keep wiggling it till I find a good spot and I feel like it's pretty stable. I'm just going to set this down here and it can cure and it'll cure in an hour or two and then you can peel that resin right off the, the silicone. So I'm going to take, it's getting really thick and tacky. I don't want to touch my knob, but I'm just adding extra resin around that knob at the base. And um, the reason I put the, the torch on low around the knobs is you just don't want to damage your knobs at all by any chance. Then I'm going to cover it. Wait a couple hours and I'll be back. 